Hello everyone, welcome to NLP and the coronavirus day 49. And we're still on the uh, Q&A from uh, the Kabbalion, the seven hermetic laws by the three initiates, which seem to have created a lot of uh, interest for many of you. So thank you for that. I was really wondering whether it was a good choice, but it seems to have been, I mean, the video from last night, even though it's uh, not even been up for 24 hours yet, it's got over 400 views. So that's kind of like testimony. I don't know how long you watched it for. <laughs> you might have only watched it for a second and went like, nah. But anyway, uh, 400 of you at least were interested. So I'm still going through the, the Q&A because we had such great questions um, <clears throat> about the, the laws that uh, I couldn't really just do it in one live. I just don't think it would have worked. So we got questions from Amelia, we got questions from uh, Christina, and we got questions from um, uh, Adrian. And we answered one of them uh, last night, big picture, because I got to kind of like chunk up a little bit on these questions, uh, which was about polarity and gender. And, you know, a lot of you like that technique that I shared with you last night. I hope you're still using it every day. Uh, it will change your life. It's so simple and it really, really works. Now, chunking up again, the other thing that was in common uh, with the questions from Amelia and Christina and uh, Adrian was about boundaries. And they had some fairly detailed questions about boundaries. But, you know, if you haven't got boundaries in the big picture from a conceptual point of view, then really getting down into detail in boundaries, uh, you know, like the the body being a boundary, which it was, was uh, I think, Christina's question, um, isn't going to make sense. So I was going like, right, I'm going to do a session on boundaries. But then I remembered I've already done a session on boundaries. And I did it uh, a year, 18 months ago, probably uh, when I was at, out teaching Huna in Hawaii, which I do every, every March and September. Um, <clears throat> And I recorded a session on boundaries, or filmed a session on boundaries, from the beach uh, at the uh, Apuna uh, Beach Resort Hotel on the Kohala Coast in Hawaii. And I would teach the same thing again. So I was thinking, like, why am I going to teach it from my library again when we could be transported in time and in space to the beach in Hawaii to learn about boundaries. So, here we go. Good evening everybody and welcome to Facebook Live. And it's Aloha from Hawaii again. Uh, every six months I come out here to do our uh, Huna Intensives, March and September. And so I thought, well, since I can do a Facebook Live from the beach, that's exactly what I'd do. Uh, the sun is just uh, coming up. We've got the ocean behind us, so a really fantastic setting. And uh, very, very quiet on the beach this morning. Uh, just about four or five of my students I've seen as I've been walking down here. So this evening I thought I'd do a slightly different topic. It's not really a topic that's related to NLP or hypnosis or timeline therapy. It is something that we talk about a lot on our HUNA trainings, and that is the idea of boundaries and how do we go about setting up bound personal boundaries and how do we go about managing those boundaries once we've set them up. Because if we look at the things that prevent us from being able to create what we want in our life, then we have a number of things. Some of those we've already talked about. Uh, negative emotions, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, uh, limiting beliefs or limiting decisions like I'm not good enough, I uh, can't have the kind of money that I want. And also the thing that would uh, prevent us from being able to create what we wanted would also be our lack of boundaries or our inability to manage boundaries. So let me explain what a boundary is. So a boundary is uh, something which uh, you set up uh, around yourself or for yourself, which communicates to other people, these are the things which are okay with me and the things that you wanna have included in your boundary and the things that are outside of that boundary. And we want to have those in our personal relationships, uh, in our family, in our work, in our career, in our business. Now, quite often uh, what I find when I'm working with clients 
is that they experience people running over their boundaries because they haven't effectively communicated to people what their boundaries are. And what, people, what in general people tend to do is they tend to assume that everybody else's boundaries are the same as theirs, and they're not. And, you know, when somebody violates our boundaries, runs over our boundaries, does something around us that we're not okay about, then our unconscious mind tells us about that by uh, creating a negative emotion. We might get angry about somebody doing something. We might get sad about somebody doing something. It might scare us. We might be afraid. We might feel hurt or we might feel guilty if we violate one of our own personal boundaries. So... Uh, Really what you need to start deciding is, what is okay for you? What, if you wanna have, if somebody wants to be in your space, for want of a better word, um, <clears throat> what, do, what, what do they need to do to be in that space? But what are the things that aren't okay for you in that space? And being very specific and very clear about that in the way that we communicate it to people. Now quite often, People put down boundaries and they put down boundaries whilst they're feeling a negative emotion. So somebody violates a boundary, they're feeling angry about it, and they attempt to put down the boundary with the person whilst they're still angry, or they're still sad, or they're still afraid, or they're still feeling hurt. When we put down a boundary with a negative emotion, then because emotions are attractive in nature, if we put down a boundary whilst we're angry, then what we'll do is actually attract people to violate that boundary and, and make us angry to prove that if people do that around us, we'll be angry. So the, the correct state, the most appropriate state to be in when you set up a boundary is to be in an emotionally flat state, if not actually a positive state, yeah? So, you know, one of the things really would be to be able to put down your boundary in a very matter-of-fact way. You know, almost like if somebody would ask you the time, um, you'd probably just go 10 to seven. And it's just a fact, there's no emotion around it. So that's an important thing. <laughs> and to put down boundaries in a towards way, as in these are the things that <clears throat> when you do these, I'll be happy. When you do this, I won't be happy. So that then people can decide whether they want to be inside of your boundary or not. So, you know, <clears throat> a couple of things you could do this in uh, employment. Let's have a conversation about uh, how we can work together successfully, the things that I expect for us to work together successfully, and here's the things that would actually have us um, not be able to work together successfully. Relationships. Let's have a chat about what makes me happy and what makes me unhappy. So here's the things that, like, if we, if we do this in my space, I'll be happy. If this happens in my space, I won't be happy. And communicating that to the other person. Now, when you put down a boundary with um, a zero emotion in a very matter-of-fact way, or you put down a boundary with a positive emotion, the chances of then somebody testing that boundary are dramatically reduced. Though, you know, if you think about it, if you put down a boundary with a five-year-old, then what does that five-year-old do? they tend to test the boundary to see if you really mean it. So the important thing therefore is to um, expect the boundary is just gonna be down there and the people are gonna respect it, though also being prepared with a strategy for what you do if somebody actually doesn't maintain your boundary, doesn't honor your boundary and um, runs over that boundary. The important thing is to deal with it without negative emotion, because as soon as you feel angry or sad or afraid or hurt or guilty, then it's, it's, it's all gonna go horribly wrong. So the, the thing therefore is to you know, take a breath, <clears throat> maybe do some work with yourself to release the negative emotion. Then here's the protocol or the strategy for managing boundaries. So the first thing you say to the person is, do you realize that we had an agreement? If they say no, 
then presupposition of NLP, <coughs> meaningful communication is the response you get, therefore you didn't actually effectively communicate with the person that you uh, had made an agreement. So you need to take responsibility for that. So explain how <coughs> you'd made a, an agreement and they broke the agreement, and then say, would you like to remake the agreement? If they say yes, then we go through the process again. And the thing that we would check at the end of that is that now they do realize they've got an agreement with you and they realize what that agreement is. If we say, do you realize we had an agreement? <coughs> and they go, yes. Do you realize that you broke that agreement? And they say, no. Then again, we've got to go through a, a, a kind of education process, a sort of feedback process, as in how they actually violated that boundary taking responsibility for the communication ourselves and then making sure that they realize what the agreement is and what they need to do to maintain it. If they say, yes, I realize um, we had an agreement. Yes, I realize I broke that agreement. Then you can say, okay, would you like to remake that agreement? Uh, if they say no, then I think we can pretty much say it's over and out. If they say yes, then you remake the agreement. What do you do then if they break the agreement again? Well, we go through the same process again. But I think a personal thing that you've got to think about is how many times are you personally willing to remake an agreement with a person? You know, if they keep violating your boundaries, really they're not willing to respect and honor your boundaries. If you allow people around you that aren't willing to respect and honor your boundaries, you're going to experience a lot of negative emotions all of the time. But equally, <clears throat> you know, you'd really have to ask yourself the question, for what purpose would you want to have people around you that weren't willing to honor and respect your boundaries? So um, Uncle George Naopi is one of my mentors uh, in Huna and the chants here in Hawaii at a uh, hula halau, a uh, hula school. Uh, it was all, uh, uh, all, all girls in the, in the school. And uh, he had this particular rule as far as um, how many times people could break the rules and how many times uh, people could violate his boundaries, if you like. So if somebody, one of the girls came to him and said, uh, sorry, Kumu, I, uh, I, 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 I broke one of the rules. The first time the, the person did that, uncle would just go, oh, you know, everybody screws up, get over it, it's fine. If they then did the same thing again, then he would say, that's shame on you. If they did it a third time, he would say that that was shame on him because he allowed them to do it a third time. So the first time, get over it. Everybody makes a mistake. Forget it. Second time, shame on you. Third time, shame on me. And at the third time of shame on me, that was an over and out situation. It was a three strikes and you're out. So I think that's the important thing is that for you to decide how many times you're willing to go through that maintenance uh, of boundaries um, strategy. Um, and, you know, quite often when somebody tests the boundary in the first place, it's a, it's a totally unconscious thing. You know, I said about five-year-olds. Well, you know, everybody's unconscious mind is like a five, six or seven-year-old. So quite often when they just test the boundary, and it's just a small little test, then you say like, no, we already have an agreement on this. This is not the way things are gonna be around here. Whether they've done presenting magically or not, they do a perfect distractor and they just go like, I was just checking. Uh, <coughs> and that's the end of it. Quite often, if there's a small test and we don't do anything about it, the next test is a bigger test. And then the next test is a bigger test until you know quite often people have the experience that something massive comes out it knocks them flat but in actual fact this thing had been building for quite some time so uh, there's some uh, guidelines on boundaries something a little bit different it was something that we we're talking about in the uh, Huna intensive whilst we've been here this week and it's uh, something that i haven't spoken about in any other uh, of my facebook lives 
So since I'm here in Hawaii, I thought I'd uh, share that with you. Um, I think it's an important life skill. It's something that we're not really taught. Most people aren't taught how to do. And uh, what I find with my clients is that quite often, uh, as I say, the reason why they experience their boundaries being run over is that they haven't really told anybody what their boundaries are. So I hope that's useful for you. Uh, next week's Facebook Live Thursday at uh, 1900 uh, BST, because I think we're still going to be on uh, summertime, I think, uh, next Thursday. will be not at the beach, not at this glorious sunrise. It will be back in our West London uh, offices and studio in Twickenham. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great morning if you're in this uh, part, of, part of the world. Uh, a great day if you're in um, America and a great evening if you're in Europe. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the beach and looking at the uh, fantastic Pacific Ocean and all those kind of things behind me. Uh, the fantastic sunlight. Though we're getting fantastic sun here in the in the UK. So there's our stuff on boundaries. And, you know, I, I covered that before the coronavirus pandemic kicked off or any of the other things as far as, uh, you know, what we're seeing with the rioting in the, in the US and the UK. Um, <clears throat> and those basic laws still hold true. And they always will. These are like real core principles, core principles to hold to ourselves. And, you know, Amelia, uh, with your reply after I'd done the, um, the session, with regard to your question, um, and you know, I'm not, I'm not picking you out in turn because I know you put this in the public thing, so you know, uh, you're quite happy to uh, for the for the question or the the the, uh, the point to be made public is you know and around and a lot of this is happening at the moment, Amelia. So you know, you, you don't take it personally um, about people putting up negative comments and etc. on posts on Facebook. I was just looking at a number of my other friends uh, who were getting a little bit upset, a little bit irate about they, they put things up on, on Facebook at the moment about a particular thing that's going on at the moment. And let's face it, there's a lot going on at the moment. Uh, and then people, you know, saying things, you know, maybe nasty things. Some of the things weren't nasty. They were just a different point of view. Um, so here's my strategy for boundaries on social media. <laughs> uh, maybe this is the this maybe this is the new talk on uh, on on boundaries. The first thing is um, to you know when somebody responds to a post that you put up and it brings up an emotional response for you, using the techniques that we've taught you over the last few weeks, let go of the emotion so that you're totally balanced with it. Do ho'oponopono with the person, so you're totally fine with them. You might find, okay, I can just let that go. Or you might find, even when you've let go of the negative emotions, even when you've done ho'oponopono and healed up the person inside of you, that you're still not okay with what they've said. You're still not okay with them in your world, in which case, Social media makes this very simple. What you do is you just delete them as a friend and you block them. And then you do the rapid ho'oponopono. I forgive you, do you forgive me? Chop, chop. All done. Uh, and I think that's a, a strategy that uh, we, we all need to start using now on social media because people are getting so, you know, there's lots of emotions flying around the place around so many things. And we're in this position where we can communicate like like crazy. And a, a lot of people just write things that maybe they don't mean or, you know, and, and also with social media, because it's unlike video, you know, a lot of it's text-based. Remember from an NLP point of view, that's just 7% of the meaning of the communication. There's no voice tonality. There's no facial expression. There's no physical physiology. So the potential for misreading something, misinterpreting something 
is absolutely huge. So just make sure that you're okay inside of yourself, you let go of the emotions inside of yourself, you're feeling pono inside of yourself, both with yourself and the other person. Then read it again. If it's not something that you want in your universe, then just delete them. Feel good about it. Just and block them if necessary, because just deleting them, they could still look at your posts and still comment. But delete them and block them if you want them done. That's a very, very simple process. It's almost like the Facebook social media process of Ho'oponopono. <laughs> Hope that was useful for you. Uh, and I love you lots, wherever you are in the world. And uh, ahoo we hope.